So the horn has blown, and that means we are just a moment or two away from having carts on track. Well, welcome those of you in that are watching on our social media channels. Junior 3 on track now. Colin Stewart's the 21. Logan Walston, the 56. Cowboy Car to the 151. Riker Ridley's the 81. And Cooper Kidd in the 28. That'll be the starting lineup for this Junior 3 feature. Race number four of the afternoon. 16 still to go after this one. So lots of time to join us if you're watching on social on Pit Row TV as part of your subscription. Take in the afternoon racing here for the WKA National Dirt Series. And Cowboy Carter wastes little time. One lap complete, one cart passed. He is up to second now. As he works his way by Ridley in the 81, who, uh, well, check that Ridley kind of followed suit there. Walston, the one that got really shuffled out of line. And here we go for the race lead. Oh, contact, Cowboy Carter. That's usually not what you want to see. They corner a lot better with four wheels on the ground instead of two. Carter now up front, but Man, that was a moment, no doubt. It's Riker Ridley trying to find a way up to and around. And Carter that time in turn two, big slip. Gonna open it up for Riker Ridley now. And just when Cowboy Carter thought this was gonna be a walk in the park, anything but. And look who else is there. That is Logan Walston who fell back earlier. He's now up to third. Carter, really, he's got his hands full. In fact, Carter now falling back to third here as we approach the halfway point in this one. It has been an up and down race so far in this one for Cowboy Carter. Who would have expected to see that coming? He now fi finds his way around this track in third spot. As yellow is on track, we have got one off in turn number four. And that is your pole sitter, Colin Stewart. I want to say hi to those of you watching on social media right now. Over in the World Karting Association Facebook page and our YouTube channel as well. So I got Pit Row TV on YouTube. Let us know where you're watching from, who you are cheering for. Maybe we'll give you a shout out here. It's Riker Ridley going to lead him down here for the six lap shootout. Here at the Beaver Creek Speedway and just outside of Huntsville, Alabama. As Ridley is pulled away, but he has got a back bumper full of Logan Walston. And if you want to make a move, the time is coming. you got four laps and counting to go. Make it three and a half now. 
a little bit further behind them. Cowboy Carter, Cooper Kidd trying to find their way forward. Now, if these two start battling, that might help them a lot, but they've got to really time what's going to happen here. So Alston falls back a little bit. He's going to take a little bit of time now to try to reel in Riker Ridley. Maybe not. Off turn four. This might be the move. Contact in turn one. Two to go, and that is going to open the door. Ridley going to go from the penthouse to the outhouse. Back to position number four, and White Flag is out this time. New leader. Cart number 56, Logan Walston, ahead of this one. And he is going to be free and clear if he can keep it between the cones. And he will. Checkers in the air for Logan Walston. Up next, we know this one's a fan favorite. Super heavy. Just before our future stars. So we'll give you a couple of freebies here in our live look-in. And folks, again, tell us who you're watching from, who you're cheering for, as you may hear that horn in the background. See, JR watching from Lisden, Indiana. Jay, I don't even know where Lisden is. Although I spent some time in Indiana this week and learned a lot about that state. Speaking of Indiana, I want to send all of our thoughts and prayers to the folks in the various towns that experienced a ton of severe weather up in Indiana this past, uh, I guess, past 48 hours or so is what it's been. Kind of been a whirlwind, whirlwind week in a lot of ways. It's kind of surreal to me personally. I, I literally was in Winchester, Indiana on Wednesday before everything came through on Thursday. That was pretty surreal to me to be able to to, to do that and, and then see all those pictures on social media. And, man, they got hammered hard, and that's certainly a racing town. They all about it up there. Is Andrew Trulove, also from Indiana, up in Hamilton, Indiana. I want to say hi to you. And we talked earlier about the rain here, and this is the amazing part, folks. Look at this racetrack as you're looking at it, and you can see just what good shape this racetrack is in. But they just told me, and I, I knew the number was big. They said in 12 hours, this racetrack took three and three quarters inches of rain. And when we showed up late yesterday evening, about 7.30, 8 o'clock, aside from the fact there were literal lakes along the roadside we couldn't really tell well that and the really sticky mud out here off the racetrack uh was it was a really big hint but the racetrack itself was in fine fine shape and you can see that here today this racetrack looking pristine so i gotta give mad props to the folks here at beaver creek speedway to, to make that happen and be able to put on a, a show and be able to get the track even remotely ready after what any other promoter would have deemed as uh, non-salvageable. And there you see him over there in the lineup shoot. Super heavy. Ready to go. Well, everybody except the guy at the front of the field. Climb in your cart. We're waiting on you. Ah, there you go. Rob Sanders holding us up up there, apparently. So Rob's in the cart. Make sure everybody else is sorted out. Now, once that, if you heard that horn earlier, there is a specified time limit after that horn blows that they've got to be on the grid or in the cart and ready to go. And they've kind of borrowed that. It's a great idea from some of the various uh, dirt late model tours and some others that have done very similar things to kind of give a, a time certain in which they will roll. So that's kind of been the uh, plan today. Something different here with the WK National Dirt Series. Jack's Motorsports is tuning in from Sunbury, Pennsylvania. Glad to have you folks dialed in with us and tuning in. Of course, we said we're all over the place here with the WK Dirt Series page. Our folks here, well, us here at Pit Row TV. Of course, we've also got uh, the, the mothership, if you will, the WKA World Karting Association Facebook page. I want to say hi to all of you. Man, things are, things are certainly getting rolling in karting land uh, as a whole. Whether it's dirt karting, road racing, sprint tracks, I mean, it's going to be that time of year. And uh, certainly glad to see all the hubbub going on. It has been one of those winters that I think a lot of us are just glad to get back to a racetrack, no doubt about that. So super heavy, there you hear them, and there you see them as they get ready to roll. And if you folks like what you see, give us a sub. Head over there to 
pitrow.tv. You see at the bottom of your screen, become a subscriber. You can take in great carting action like this and many other events we have throughout the course of the year. In fact, one of the big things we've got this year is a new addition to the Pit Row TV lineup is the Ultimate Super Late Model Series on dirt. Not only their Southern Tier, but their Heart of America Series and some uh, select fast track racing, crate racing events as well. So got a lot more dirt racing coming to you on Pit Row TV here this year as we are set to go. Green flag is out. Rob Sanders let him down to the green. Russ Brazel, Wendell Shavis in this one. See Shavis there in that blue cart in third. Daniel Shacklin, Mitchell Bridges, Colin Malugan. Ryan Hevner's in the seven. Josh Carter, the 151. David Andrews and Bryce Overton, the double zero. Is, and they're getting after it there at the back of the field, trying to make hay very quickly in this 15-lap feature. Another pass as for position number six as Malugan making his way forward. Man, Malugan's really starting to roll here. You see him there in the black cart trying to get by the 14 of Shacklett. Don't know if he's just burning it all up here early and those things are going to fall off or what's going to happen, but he's trying to make something happen, at least while he's got some good rubber on that cart. Second through sixth is where the action is as you look further back. Some other guys going after it. And here we go now for position number three. That is Ryan Hefner moving forward. He, too, going to open the door for the 14 of Daniel Shacklett. Malugan going to follow suit. So the 59 of Russ Brazel started second. He is now outside the top six. Losing time. And this battle continues for fourth. Shacklett and Malugan continuing to tag team and draft their way forward, or at least try to. They got some pretty heavy hitters in front of them now, though. Ryan Hebner, Wendell Shavis. Those are not going to be easy passes to make. I just saw Malugan that time slip a little bit off turn number four. Is the grip starting to go away on that 10 cart? Or is everybody else just getting that much better? Meanwhile, Rob Sanders, you see that red little blur on the side of the frame? That's him. He is gone in that 44 cart, leaving this pair to fend for second. Wendell Shavis, Ryan Hebner. And Hevner is there. Remember, he started back in seventh spot. Did Ryan Hevner. See, he's having a good little race here. With now three laps to go, they're not going to catch the leader, Rob Sanders. It's all about P2 right now. Who is going to be the runner-up in this one? Shave is able to make that cart very, very wide. Fend him off the time being. And, folks, I want to remind you, like what you see, this is the last race of our free preview. You want to see more here from Beaver Creek, home of the Maximilian. Check out the address, the bottom of your frame, pitrow.tv. Watch out, turn one, Hefner. Underneath, Chavis. Chavis lost some momentum, but up front, Rob Sanders cruises to the victory here in Super Heavy. And look at that gap, almost a third of a lap over second place. Colin Malugan. Wendell Shavis fell to third, or actually he fell further back after that contact. So big shake up there as we came to the flag on the final lap, but Rob Sanders ends up in victory lane. So that'll do it for Super Heavy. Our fifth of 20 races in the afternoon. So again, if you folks like what you see, head on over to pitrow.tv. Become a subscriber and check out our WK Dirt Series following this season, as well as many other properties we'll have on Pit Row TV as the horn goes off in the background. So next class, Future Stars Trophy set to go. Of course, those uh, in years prior, better known as Red Plate. Referring, as we bitched some of our folks earlier, hear a lot of terms in carding that you go, what does that mean? That's another one of those, what does that mean? It refers to the color of the restrictor plate on the engine. 
If you ever hear that uh, purple plate or green plate or red plate or whatever, uh, it refers to the color of restrictor plate. And each restrictor plate size is kind of dictated by that color. And, and I'm, we're making up numbers here, but it might be, you know, a quarter of an inch for a green plate and 20 hundredths of an inch for a red plate or whatever it is. And that's how they keep track of them. And it's very easy for a competitor to say, hey, I have to run this color plate. So if you hear that term in carding, that's exactly where that comes from. I want to say hi to Gerald Harris. As he says hello as we get ready to uh, fly off here in our free preview, our live look in. First, we have to get the double zero of Overton off the racetrack, and I guess they're going to bring the cart buggy out and do the whole thing. I think it looks like it's, I don't know if it's locked up the rear axle or what happened there. He's looking at it like maybe it did. It's usually you can get those things to roll, but if something's wrapped around them, they, uh, they tend not to roll very much. So hopefully we can get Mr. Uh, Mr. Cart Buggy Guy to hurry up and we can get this cart off the racetrack. They're yelling across the racetrack to his crew. Hey, what's wrong with it, man? I don't know. You can hear that end of the conversation right there. Apparently some contact between he and another competitor. Crew guy said, well, I missed it. Well, I don't know what happened. Everybody else missed it, too. Of course, the crew guy comes up to say, uh, yeah, well, you know, if I didn't miss it, well, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, Flagman said the exact same thing. We All we know is he ended up there, and it didn't go much further from that point. So uh, that's, that's kind of how those things usually work. So while they get that cleaned up, we're going to end our free preview. And if you like what you see, you want to head on over to pitrow.tv, the address there at the bottom of your frame. We will be off and rolling in just a moment with our future stars, our Junior 2, Clone Medium coming up, Pro Junior 3, and Semi-Pro still to come, Clone Heavy warm-up. Got Predator 390 coming, Junior All Pros, Pro Clone at the end of the night as well. So it's going to be a fun day of racing here at the Beaver Creek Speedway. So we encourage you to join us. That's going to do it for our free preview. So we want to say, by the way, so hi to Kevin Bruce from Reedsville, North Carolina. Johnny Ellington is uh, cheering on the grandson, Cooper Kid, and cheering on Ryan Hebner in that last race. So want to say hi to you folks as well. Thank you for tuning in on our free preview. Again, if you like what you see, the address is right there on the bottom of your frame www.pitrow.tv So we are going to leave you on the free preview. 